All right. That was a little more jumpy. Before we get going, I'm going to fill you guys in with some news. Important news, all right? Um, remember a while back I was a little upset because of... Okay, I mainly am upset. I'm upset because of the knowledge that is kept from the general public. That's got me on fire most of the times, especially when um, so many innocent people fall victim to it when it's not... It's not needed. There's no excuse for it. If, uh, if, if some human beings on the face of this earth know some, some vital knowledge, w the general public deserves to know that same knowledge, um, especially when it changes lives or potentially ends lives. That is absolutely not fair. Um, there's no doubt about it. We're being lied to every single day. Um, if what's true when they say the military is an average 50 years ahead of the general public, when it comes to technology, well, how, why is that fair? Because it's our money they use to obtain that technology, that knowledge, right? Obviously, I could, I could go on for quite a while on a tangent on this topic quite easily. What I'm getting at is I have recently received another email from our friend Eddie Edgar, United Kingdom, nuclear physicist. Um, it took me a while to access my Proton email again because I misplaced the freaking password and I've got so many emails and the go, it's stupid. And if you attempt to reset your password in your Proton mail, it deletes everything in that inbox before you get back in there. So I had to leave it alone, carry on, go back to attempting to crack it open. I finally did. Found an email sitting there from Edgar, which has been sitting there for a while. <clears throat> get this one. Unfortunately, and hopefully you're, I'm, I imagine you're probably still listening, Edgar. Um, Edgar now all of a sudden, suddenly has advanced bone cancer. Two flavors of cancer, advanced, suddenly. How shitty is that? And he also assured me there's no way it came from work because they are rigorously tested before they enter facilities and when they exit. And he has never had a hiccup once, ever. So um, your guess is as good as mine. From what Edgar shared with us after seeing that Sasquatch, what appeared to him to be doing exercises, but then it became, it started to become transparent from the waist down. When I looked over and saw him, and that's when he lost time, and Edgar's phone was texting him a welcome back text from 32 different countries around the world. Now all of a sudden he has two different forms of advanced cancer. So that's enough to make your average person pissed off. You know, it makes me pissed off. I'm sure everybody listening to this video today will send out a prayer for Edgar. I pray that he, he does get healthy again. It's absolutely not fair. This has happened to him. He didn't ask for any of these experiences. Um, he didn't go sticking his nose where he shouldn't have been, right? Intentionally. I also ask Edgar to reach out to some of his colleagues he knows around the planet to see if they'll possibly... Use an alias. I don't care. I know you guys are listening too. I know numerous scientists out there are listening to me right now. And I know that you are scared for your lives and rightfully should be. Considering the track record of scientists that get killed or disappear around the planet today in the past years. It's not that cool, is it? I mean, obviously, you know, there's a nuclear scientist who was just assassinated by Israel in Iran. That's not too much of a surprise, is it? With the uh, so-called warfare things that are going on on the planet today. 11 nuclear scientists in Pakistan were annihilated, assassinated. Um, if you can mark, well, what was Mark's name? Sorry, Edgar, I forget his last name. Mark, oh, there's a scientist who was assassinated in the South Pole. Google it up. There's been numerous scientists taken. German descent astrophysicists, I believe. Dave Plyerson knows more intimately in these details than I do, but the fact, the fact is across the board, it seems the smarter you are in this lifetime, the more at risk your life is. How nasty is that? Seems uh, the mainstream group, the group of monsters that control the mainstream, um, they want us all kept dumb, dumb as a hammer. All they want us to be is as smart as a frickin' honeybee. And that's about it, right? Just keep, keep making the honey at all costs and don't get smart. If you get smart or you question, you get deleted from mainstream right you get marked and deleted 
the higher you level you go in obtaining higher knowledge, it's easily proven the more at risk your life is, unless you fall in line. It's very, very frustrating. Out of all the people that Edgar did relate to me, the people that did, he did ask if they would share some of their Sasquatch experiences with me, which are many, numerous for each scientist. Um, obviously straight across the board, um, none were willing because one fact only, they're scared for their lives, right? Um, so, so all of you scientists out there who are concerned for your lives, I absolutely feel for you. I wish there was something I could do to help you or annihilate the people that threaten your lives. Maybe one day we will be able to, I sure hope so. But in the meantime, when you do, if you do get a chance, just make up an alias, crack open a false email somewhere, and uh, if you can, send us what you got, all right? That way, and use me as a conduit, I'll share it openly. I will share it all. Anything you send with me, I will share it word for word with the world through this channel, all right? Maybe it's irresponsible of me, maybe it isn't, but I'm not scared. I'm just not scared. I'm not intimidated, and I, uh, it's going to take a lot to intimidate me in a silence. Probably a bullet, that's about it. But Anyway, that's my update on Edgar. Edgar, <clears throat> I emailed you back late. I don't think I've got a reply from you yet, but uh, keep sharing, my man. Stay strong, get healthy, don't give up, all right? There's a lot of us are behind you and supporting you and worried about you and sending our prayers. Now, getting on with the truth. <clears throat> Another thing, too, let this one little spiel that I just gave you guys, um, don't forget, um, this is a prime example of why I am frustrated with people who put on the horse blinders and look forward and don't take in all of these factual experiences from these people of higher intelligence than your average person. All right? For all you people that are intent on staring at dermal ridges and footprints and banging on trees, I'm going to say it again. Get your heads out of your asses and quit enabling this topic to go in an endless circle quit it all right quit being part of the problem get your head out of your asses and become part of the solution there's shit going down if you decide that you need to ignore these facts well get out of the way just get out of the way and quit dragging people into your endless circle of no return all right of going nowhere quit wasting time I probably sound a little I probably sound a little frustrated today, but I am frustrated. I mean look at Edgar. Look at Edgar. He was not he did not feel knee jerked for one second to uh, share away and, and not share with all the he openly right off the word go shared all of his personal experiences with you. Alright? To have you and your better interest. The amount of people, people I trust that email me with facts and tell me I can't share. It's so calm, it's ridiculous. Now, obviously, I'm not going to share what people share with me when they ask me not to. But it's times like this that it's all, it all just starts to get quite frustrating. Okay? Um, hey, Steve, guess what? This and this and this, blah, blah, blah. Don't say anything. Don't say anything. Don't share, but. Guess what? But. Don't share, but. When, you know, we all have to, uh, we're all going to have to come together and form that good guy army eventually. Somebody's got to do it. Somebody's got to quit putting that barrier up of secrecy. And soon we're going to have to spill everything we know to the one solid team and start kicking ass. That's how I feel about it. Until then, of course, I'm going to honor my friends, contacts, wishes with secrecy to the things they share with me, but... I'm, I'm, getting, uh, I'm getting a little on the impatient side at times is when I hear from people like Edgar. I mean, his life's at stake now. The guy's worked his freaking ass off. Super kind, generous person. Now he's going to die. Needlessly die, possibly. And that pisses me off. And it should piss off every single one of you, too. Anyway, let me get on with Sharon before I get myself worked right up and start throwing F-bombs. And directly insulting the living shit out of people online when it's basically a waste of time. Steve, Bob from St. Louis here. I'm kind of sorry to take room up room here, as my story really isn't shit. But I just want you to know how much I appreciate what you're doing. 
I grew up in the 60s and 70s, spending my summers in a fairly desolate and wild wooded area next to a summer-only community of homes only about an hour and a half from a major metropolitan area in the Midwest of USA. We spent our days hiking, camping, and exploring the woods that surrounded a group of perhaps 150 cottages, not too far, too far from two creeks that eventually found their way to the Mississippi River. Once in a while, I did experience that feeling of being watched while we made our daily hikes, but never thought too much about it. None of the dread I hear so many talk about, but an occasional whiff of paranoia that told me that maybe some of the older kids are following us or something. Anyway, one summer, my sister had a fairly intense bout of sleepwalking, and once, and only once, she described people of the woods who called out to her in her dreams and told her to get out of bed come outside. This had my mom freaked out, so she finally called her father, the city boy, and worldwide beat cop, and worldwide beat cop, to come visit and try to get to the bottom of whatever it was that was happening. Mom and Papa, as we called him, stayed up late for a series of nights to catch my sister on her nightly wanderings. Papa was adamant that a sleepwalker never be wakened while they were wandering in their sleep. My sister walked around the house, totally oblivious to Mom and Papa watching her, as she strolled around the house and then unlocked the door and calmly walked down maybe 40 stone steps to the wooden bridge that crossed the creek in front of her cottage. In her bare feet, she walked over gravel that would have most, most people hop-stepping, but in her sleep state, it didn't seem to bother her in the least. We never saw these people of the woods and never knew what she meant by that term, but we all had thoughts we didn't share with one another that this was something going on that we didn't completely understand. The following summer, the local TV stations and newspapers were alive with tales of sightings in neighboring Missouri, where huge hairy men were being described with the handle Momo, meaning Missouri monster. The very first time I heard about these big hairy men who hung out in the woods, I just knew that's what was going on with my sister the summer before. I visited these woods less and less as I grew older, got married, and started a family of my own. Then, for whatever reason, I did some internet research and found you, and a few others, who weren't those reality show idiot types and seemed genuine in their quest for the truth. Then it dawned on me that maybe 60-year-old me ought to go back to the woods of 10 to 20 year old me and have a look around. Would I be able to tell if something is up? Would there be signs of something out there that could be, couldn't be explained? Well, 10 minutes into my first hike alone in the woods of my youth, I had my answer. Holy shit. Signs everywhere. Bent trees, X's, trees bent in archways, reach from bank to bank in the local creek, woven structures that just might pass or flash flood debris if you didn't know any better, columns of inter columns of intricately stacked rocks, teepees, trees inserted root ball up into the V of even taller live trees, a well-worn path through the woods in April, in spite of the fact that residents don't show up there until May, things you'd really never notice unless you had a reason to question them, things that just pass for normal unless you examine them a little bit closer. I sent cell phone pictures to a trusted friend who had told me what I thought were just campfire stories years ago when we were camped out in these same woods. He sent them back with a lot of things outlined that I wasn't able to see while I was on my hike and taking those pictures. I couldn't make out all the things that he could, but there were a few things that made the hair on my arm stand up while looking at these pics. That day I was certain I was alone in the woods, but a couple of those pictures just made me wonder. I, most, I mostly don't talk to anyone, not even my wife, about this because I think most people think I've gone around the bend. Thank for helping good people get this bizarre slice of life off their chest. My sisters rode horses, and I've witnessed their bond with these wonderful creatures, although I don't have first-hand experience of my own in that area. I totally get that Mr. Macaroni was your bud. I've lost two 16-year-old terriers, and I can get it that the bond with a horse can be even more intense than that of a man and his dog. Sorry for your loss, bro. All right, Robert, thanks for that email, man. Thanks for that share. And uh, good for you to go up there and have a look around and to not just laugh at the topic and laugh, laugh people's uh, words off, right? It is what it is. This shit's going on out there. And there is some people out there who know the answers. I know there is people out there who know the answers. And uh, hopefully soon, sooner or later, um, there's going to be some things happening that are going to shed some light. But in the meantime, um, I will guarantee you, I don't know how many, but I know 
that you uh, scientists around the world are watching this channel. I know you are. And if I could just somehow encourage you to go to an internet cafe, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to do to make you feel better about it. Go to an internet cafe, go to a library, crack open a, an email account, use that computer, and just send us all. It's not just me, it's all of us, it's the world. Send the world through me what you know, what you've seen. All right? Because we know you've seen a lot. We know you know a lot. And um, the only way we're going to get better, gain more knowledge, is through the people. That's the only place it's going to come from is the people. It is amazing the information, the mainstream information that is getting censored and withheld, isn't it? It's almost disgusting in a way when you think about it. If you look at it from just a, an average different angle, you know, any, any child today with access to a computer, an iPhone, any child today is one click away from some of the most vile, insanely graphic, disgusting, satanic-like group rape porn scenes are readily available to the world right now, one click away. Any child, any country, basically any country, anytime they, they click, they're one click away from that, seeing that information, right? As far as videos, other videos go, every single human being, every child is one click away from being able to see somebody commit suicide online or a war scene, somebody getting head blown up or kids getting shot or burnt. One click away. That is today, right this minute. And on that same internet screen, if any one of you question perhaps how the reactions are towards the COVID virus, say anything the mainstream doesn't want you to say, you're deleted from, from, from speech. If you question certain politicians or elections, you are deleted. That's a major threat. But your children are still allowed to play play video games where it's okay to burn a hooker to death and shoot a cop because you don't want to pay her. And that's going on today. What I'm saying is, what I'm getting at is, it's uh, it's just a it's blatant obvious that there's some dark shit going on, and you are meant to be kept in the dark on numerous very vital important topics. It's absolutely easily proven. I can't believe for the life of me that anyone actually listens to mainstream news outlets today. I can't, it mind boggles me. I'll save that for another video that I have planned for the Rumble channel. I'm trying to bite my lip. I'm obviously feeling a little passionate about uh, some of these topics today. And it's hard not to go on a bit of a tangent rant, obviously. But let's get back to the main point that I want to get across today. Um, before I get carried away, is I want to send out a direct message to all you scientists in the globe today. If you have the better interest of the people in your heart, find a way and email me what you can to share my story how to hunt.com or tell my story how to hunt.com and I will share what you have to share word for word the moment I get it. All right? And uh, again, I send out prayers to to edgar and his family i pray to god that he his health mends and he gets better he does not deserve what is happening to him today all right still time what do we got it's titled 1982 huge hairy man question marks Mark, that is red. Steve, first, I very much appreciate you're giving many people the opportunity to share their very unnerving encounters. It was a summer day in 1982. I was a kid, and on a weekend fishing trip with my father, since deceased in 87, sorry to hear that, and his best friend. These guys spent every spare minute out there hunting and fishing, and very often I was taken along as my parents were divorced, so on my dad's weekend I was taken hunting and fishing. This summer day, my dad and his buddies we're fishing for brook trout on a little stream in northeast Washington state called Leclerc Creek, pronounced Leclerc, Leclerc Creek. This is an extremely heavy wooden brushy drainage off the Selkirk Mountains where some of the only grizzlies and woodland caribou in Washington state reside. So, 
to say wild rough country would be an underestimate. This mountain range leads into Canada and a person could walk 50 to 100 miles or more without crossing any pavement. Anyway, the experience. I was with my dad's buddy Streamside about 250 to 300 yards downstream from my dad. I wanted to find dad, so I left his buddy and started walking on a Streamside game trail upstream. At any point, the furthest one could see in the Alder Choke River bottom was 10 yards or so, and most places less. I was midway between my dad and his buddy and following the creek via the game trail as I came around a slight bend. Note, I was young, so I was very quiet on my feet, making little sounds as I walked up the trail. As I rounded the bend, I glanced up and saw what I thought to be a burnt stump just on the backside of a slight three to four foot rise on the nearest stream bank. As I started to look back down to my feet on the trail, the stump started to rise up. In utter terror and confusion, I watched as this thing stood straight up on two legs, at first facing away, towering over me from about 20 feet away. As the jet black stump stood, it turned simultaneously just as a person would stand from a crouching position and turned to look over his shoulder. Hair covered, human-like arms, bent at the elbows, shoulders roughly three and a half to four feet across, it glanced sideways over its shoulder at me. In terror, I screamed at the top of my lungs, and this must have confused or startled this creature. I fell to the ground and covered my head and neck, as I've been told to if you're ever being attacked by a bear. I have no idea why I responded that way, other than I was pure confusion to what I was seeing and fright. It must have leapt from the stream in one bound, I assume, as I heard no splash, and the creature was immediately barreling like a freight train right up the opposite hillside. The sound of breaking branches in that direction stopped at about 75 yards away in the impenetrable bush, and all then I heard was my dad rushing through the brush toward my direction from upstream. When he got to me, he was obviously scared, as the scream I let out must have led him to believe I was being attacked by a bear or a cougar or something. He was pissed, too as he fell in the creek and was wet up to his head as he ran to my rescue. When he arrived, I started to tell him what I had seen, and simultaneously the brush began crashing again on the opposite hillside. Where, whatever the animal was, it made noise for 250 yards up the hill. It was loud. In my experience since, I have never heard any animal make that much noise, including frightened deer, elk, moose, and bears. I've hunted the mountains of Washington, Idaho, and Montana now for 35 years, and I know what I saw. I have a college education in fish and wildlife management, and I've spent many years also working in the woods. A human-like, hair-covered, giant man with black hair covering its back and shoulders, legs, neck, and head. The neck going to its head looked like that of a weightlifter or linebacker, and the arms were ripped with muscle. The legs were as... The legs were as wide. Imagine a huge human spent every day of his life hiking in the mountains. I can only estimate its height at seven, eight feet, around 500 pounds, built like a brick shit house. Crazy. When I walked up on it, I speculate that it was squatting down, cupping its hands to scoop a drink of water streamside. When this little human walked around the corner, catching it off guard, I think it was as startled as I was. In my young age, before the internet, I had no prior knowledge of anything such as a Sasquatch. I can only describe this thing as a hairy man gorilla thing and not a frickin' bear until I was much older. I saw some artist rendering in a book some years later, and only then did I know for a fact what I'd seen. When I described this to my dad, just after the occurrence, he said, You saw a bear, and stuck to the narrative until his death in 87. My mother, on the other hand, knew I had seen something else, as I talked about it for months afterward. She has scrutinized my story multiple times over the years, and I asked if my recollection and asked if my recollection each time I explained the story has stayed consistent over the years. She has said 100% to the tiniest detail. Anyway, as you and many others know, these things exist, and I hold them in high regard. I feel like every time I go in the forest, I'm visiting their home. So, with this and my love of the outdoors, I strive to treat the forest with respect. I never leave anything in the forest like trash, and in fact, pick up any trash from others I see. I do not at this point fear these creatures, but have had a healthy respect. Thank you for allowing us all to share stories, process our experiences, and validate those happenings. You're greatly appreciated, as are all the others willing to share their very real experiences. Sincerely, 
Greg Gaston, Wrath Drum, Idaho, USA. Wow. Greg, appreciate it, man. Appreciate that share. And uh, that's basically what happened to you is exactly what happened to my grandfather. Come up and boom, there it is, squatting down, having a drink in the creek. And that is what numerous, numerous people who have surprised these things. It's always, it's very, very commonly been along the creek or river edge, and they've been squatted down over overlooking the water. So, and I've always wondered about that since I was a teenager, actually. I've always found it curious as to what it is about that particular scenario that is their weakness. So it's either the water, the aggregate between them and you when they're squatted down next to the boulders in the creek, possibly, does it mess up their sixth sense? Um, does the water short circuit their sixth sense just for a minute while they're sipping that water? Are they at, are they at an absolute calm when they're drinking water? Like typically any animal, even your horses, whatever else, when we're drinking water, head down, looking into that creek, we are feeling absolutely safe when we're doing it. Because if you're not feeling safe, you're not going to be that vulnerable by putting your focus down like to the ground, oblivious to what's above you, right? So it's just one of those things that I find uh, I'm really curious about. And coincidentally, I've said it before in my past, the majority of the closest grizzly bear encounters I've ever had is walking along a creek, a raging creek bed in thick brush. That's when I am at my... When I have to travel along a river or a creek, my senses are on fire because I know that is when my closest encounters with any predator wildlife is going to happen. And I also know that that is a weakness for these beings. That's a uh, Jake break on a logging truck if you're curious. It's not something growling at me. <laughs> but anyway, I should probably get out of here get home and eat some vitamins get a good meal in and uh, hopefully kick this bug to the curb sooner than later don't forget send in those experiences you guys and keep talking all right don't be scared don't be intimidated and don't waste your time engaging people at demand proof